Hello and welcome to this very special segment uh, on NewsX, uh, where of course we'll be discussing the most pertinent question with regards to the 2024 elections. Who exactly has an edge and who is going to win the mega battle? Of course, you can catch the exit polls on NewsX on the 1st of June as well as uh, the live coverage of the results all day on the 4th of June. But before that, we are getting you a daily dose of an expert analysis on News X exclusively for all you viewers. And joining us today is uh, Mr. Rahul Ishwar, who is a media panelist as well as an author and activist. Uh, he's also an alumnus of the London School of Economics. Uh, without further ado, I'd first like to ask you, what do you foresee to be the outcome for the entire country? No one is an astrologer, so we may not be able to predict really well. But studying the patterns, studying the way the election has unfolded, or you know the public mood manifested through mainstream media and digital media, I think this is going to be a very uh, good election, a bit more closer than we thought. Earlier, say one month ago, everyone was thinking, Abke bar char so far, which was the slogan of uh, Modi ji and NDA too. But it will be a bit more closer election, even though BJP will have an upper hand. BJP will be emerging as the uh, single most important or the largest party, without any doubt. But I think BJP uh, alone is going to have somewhere around 250 plus or minus 20. And NDA will be having somewhere around 270, 280 plus or minus 30 figure. And the crucial um, uh, downswing for NDA may come from states like Karnataka, where they may be, the Congress may be gaining 10 to 12 seats. Some spaces in uh, uh, spaces like Madhya Pradesh or some seats in Uttar Pradesh. So definitely, it is a much more uh, uh, much more close contest. I wouldn't use the word tight, but much more close contest than what was imagined earlier. All right, you've given us a picture of uh, what you predict for the entire country. Uh, but let's go state by state as well. We've seen the battle for Tamil Nadu in phase one. Uh, who do you think has an edge over there? Tamil Nadu, there is a strong India alliance or India grouping where DMK is there, Congress is there, CPI, CPM, Muslim League is there. And traditionally, Tamil Nadu, as you know, is a stronghold of the Dravidian parties. Dravidian parties rule the roost there. Uh, AADMK, which is BJP's traditional ally, broke off from them or BJP couldn't successfully stitch an alliance. So more advantage is definitely all the opinion polls and all the exit poll, I mean, all the opinion polls earlier have indicated to mo more so of a clean sweep uh, by DMK, but I would say out of 39, they may end up winning somewhere around 30 to 35 with some urban seats like Coimbatore or uh, you know, uh, Kanyakumari being BJP's strong position. Anamale definitely, uh, the BJP's charismatic leader from South may increase the vote share, but at the same point, uh, it is still yet to be deciphered whether they will be able to cross many seats. Two to five may be BJP's best chance. Uh, 30 to 35, maybe uh, the India groupings best chance in Tamil Nadu. All right. And what about Karnataka? Because Karnataka has also completed polling. All 28 seats have gone to polls over the two phases. Do you think the BJP can repeat its 2019 performance? Or do you think uh, the assembly verdict, which was in favor of the Congress, uh, will give a big blow to the ruling party? Big blow might be an exaggerated word. At the same point of time, Karnataka, as we know, Whenever there is a regional satrap or a regional strong leader, we always knew uh, BJP and NDA were in for some kind of a stumbling block. Because Modi versus who is one of the core submissions of NDA or core propositions of NDA. But you have strong region leaders like DK Shivagumar, who comes from the Vokaliga community. BJP and JDS tied up this time. Uh, the Ravana's uh, you know, tape may have some kind of impact or some kind of mood setting the nationwide. So DK Shivagumar may be able to pull in Vokaliga votes. The BJP may have taken the Lingayat votes back from because they have appointed Yedu, Yedurappa's son. Uh, the other minorities might you know, go to BJP. So the more so as possibility is Congress will definitely improve their performance in Karnataka. BJP clearly maxed out last time. Definitely they have to lose some. They are on the verge or there is possibility and probability of them losing some seats. So Karnataka, it is advantage BJP because Modi ji is a big brand there at the same point of time because of a resurgent India alliance and because of the natural swing, uh, Congress may be able to win uh, 10 plus seats there, owing they also have a very strong government there. All right. Uh, but now let's shift our focus uh, to the Hindi heartland. First up, 
uh, Madhya Pradesh, where the BJP has uh, just about six months back uh, registered a resounding victory. They've come back to power once again. Do you think that will uh, impact their prospects in the upcoming elections? Definitely, yes. Madhya Pradesh and Hindi heartland is where the core Sankh vision or BJP's vision of some people, you know, criticizingly say Hindi, Hindu, Hindustan will have more traction. So definitely Hindi heartland, Narendra Modi, he is definitely the champion. He has a huge traction in my home state, Kerala, Tamil Nadu and all, but it is more centered around the personal brand Modi cult, which he has garnered the credibility and, you know, attraction. But, you know, in places like Madhya Pradesh, even though there might be some, uh, some trouble somewhere, Definitely, it is huge advantage, BJP. They have nearly maxed out the Hindi heartland, so there is no way to go up. So, you know, definitely it is advantage uh, BJP in Madhya Pradesh with they winning more than 75 to 80 percentage of all seats or even 85 to 90 percentage of seats they have uh, contested. So, definitely it is advantage uh, for BJP. It is a huge swing, but, you know, it is yet to see whether they will have the 100 percent, near 100 percent strike rate like they last had. Definitely Madhya Pradesh, BJP is going to rule the roost without any doubt. All right. And what about Rajasthan? We've seen that the Congress has suffered a setback uh, about six months back. Uh, do you think they'll be able to bounce back? Uh, it, it will be tough for you know, Congress to bounce back in any state. But there are many spaces. For example, in Rajasthan, uh, Rajasthan, Gujarat and these kind of spaces, we have seen the Kshatriya anger because of one insulting comments, avoidable comments from one particular uh, BJP leader. So there has been some kind of anger towards the uh, you know, forward community's disengagement towards BJP. But of course, it's an intra-Hindu issue. BJP will be able to solve it. Definitely advantage is uh, for sure BJP. Uh, Rajasthan is a state that has proclivities towards BJP in a big way. Uh, the forward uh, community Hindus vote en masse. There is a strong Hindu umbrella formation of RSS and Sangh. So definitely it is advantage BJP, just like the last time, they will score heavy. They may lose one or two seats here or there, but it is definitely huge advantage BJP that's going to be in that spot. And you've mentioned Gujarat and let's shift our focus uh, to the state where the BJP back in 2019 sweeped all 26 seats. Do you think they can repeat this feat? Uh, it will be a bit uh, tough for them to repeat as such. But having said that, uh, no, there was a slight Patel Kshatriya fault line. The Hindu community always has casteism among themselves and there are many fault lines. But BJP and RSS ideology of Hindu unity have successfully stitched together a Hindu community alliance in Gujarat and it is the most successful Hindu uh, uh, space that they have created. But Patel's and uh, Kshatriya community may be having some old wounds. The minister has apologized twice. So yes, it has been contained and maintained to some extent. Uh, traditionally, Congress have always uh, taken the uh, Patel space in a bigger way uh, in the in, in the ancient past or starting from Sardar Patel times. When, when Swadantra Party came of C. Rajagopal Ajari, the forward caste moved to Swadantra Party at that point of time. But, you know, after Sankh, uh, RSS, BJP had a very good formula after the 90s where they have consolidated. Again, it is going to be advantage um, Congress, in, I mean, BJP in a big way without any doubt. But whether they will retain all the seats is something to see. But they will have nearly huge advantage in Gujarat, which is also the home state of both uh, the most powerful and the second most powerful person in Indian politics. All right. And speaking of a sweep, it's not just Gujarat that the BJP sweep last time around, but Delhi as well. All seven seats uh, were backed by the BJP the last time around. Do you think... Uh, the Aam Aadmi Party is going to pose a very tough fight, especially now that uh, Kejriwal yes. is out on bail and he's campaigning. Absolutely, yes. Because, you know, we are, traditionally, uh, you know, the Delhi Aam Aadmi Party, as we always know, in assembly, they have a huge advantage. That's the reason why some people there say we will vote for Kejriwal in assembly and in Lok Sabha, we will swing towards Modi ji. That was the mantra that any people, the huge swinging vote population usually said. But Kejriwal's arrest, which was ill-timed, like Supreme Court asked, you had 1.5 years, nobody arrested him. So many people perceive, especially the ordinary non-partisan people may perceive Arvind Kejriwal's arrest as some kind of a political victimization. They will definitely get the sympathy awards. Arvind Kejriwal's wife, ma'am, was also very active. So definitely there is a sympathy factor that may go in. So it will be a very tough fight, I believe. It will be either 4-3 in favor of BJP 
or somewhere around 5 to 2 in favor of BJP. But BJP may have an upper hand with a strong Delhi government, a strong global leader like Narendra Modi emerging. But no doubt, Arun Kejriwala and AAP will present a very spirited fight without any doubt. And they'll be presenting themselves more as a victims and martyrs of the corrupt or of the you know persecution, so-called persecution by our agencies and ED. So yes, Arun Kejriwalji and uh, our Aadmi Party is definitely going to perform better than the last time. And now, shifting focus to Uttar Pradesh in particular, which has the largest chunk of the 543 seats at 80. Do you think uh, the Congress-SP duo will be able to break uh, the Modi-Yogi double engine? Uh, often it is said the way to India's rule is through UP. UP being nearly 80 seats and one of the largest states in India, definitely UP holds a very important aspect. We can see that Rahul Gandhi is resurgent, India Block is resurgent, so that entire grouping is research and Rahul Gandhi's and uh, Samajwadi Party's Sri Akhilesha's forming is strong. Uh, if he, if uh, SP can consolidate the Muslim Yadav vote bank in a very strong sense and India Alliance can play it cards right, they may be able to uh, you know, wean away some seats from BJP. But definitely, I think every political analyst has mentioned that BJP will definitely cross 50 or 60 seats or NDA will definitely cross 60 to 65 seats. The best case scenario is at 10 to 15 seats or 10 to 20 seats for the SP. So huge percentage, again, like 70 percentage or 80 percentage will be going to BJP and NDA. But no doubt, India Alliance, after 10 years of you know rule, will definitely have that kind of uh, prospect by you know increasing their vote share and seat share and again 20 percentage of uh, that space is again Muslim community and there is a huge sizable Muslim Yadav community if the caste, caste coalition comes and Rahul Gandhi has been mooting ideas like caste census mm. so if that comes together 10 or 20 seats are a possibility for uh, you know, India group in uh, Uttar Pradesh. And speaking of North India, uh, we are shifting our focus to Bihar in particular where the NDA last time around sweeped 39 of the 40 seats, do you think they will be able to repeat this feat considering the fact that Nitish Kumar has jumped ship twice, first to the Margat Bandhan and now he's back? Or do you think a considerable chunk of the vote will go to the RJD and the Congress? Uh, two issues are there. Last time there was a very strong national security angle that was there. The Pulwama uh, you know, narrative was there. Many people you know, who became martyrs for us uh, in that particular attack was from Bihar. So there was high sentiments, high emotion. There, There is no underlying such strong emotional theme that is connecting at this point. And the people like Tejasi Yadav has been drawing huge, uh, you know, a huge number of people in its rallies. So it is, uh, it is up to what we can see. But there is a general feeling, especially when BJP said they are going to cross 400 seats and people like Ananda Kumar Hedge gave irresponsible statements like they are change constitution. There may be a fear uh, the backward community reservation may be touched. Modi ji and Sri Amit Shah has continuously assured that no no one can touch it. And even if Baba Sahib Ambedkar himself comes back, no nobody is going to change constitution. So that may have given some kind of assurance. But at the same point of time, yes, RJD will perform and the India group will definitely perform better than the last time. But near 38 to 39 might look an uphill task for BJP. But they will again have somewhere around 30 plus seats or nearly 30 seats. RJD will definitely perform well. Congress and RJD campaign will have good amount of vote share and seats this time. Maybe around 10 to 12, I guess. And let's also, in fact, uh, take a look at the tripartite battle in West Bengal between the BJP, the TMC, uh, as well as the Congress. Do you think Mamata Banerjee's decision to contest solo will cost her votes? Because uh, do you think there's a possibility of the votes to get divided? See, there are three strong formations in West Bengal. One is led by BJP, one is the TMC, Trinamool Congress itself, and one is the larger India formation where Congress is there, CPM is there. CPM was the most, most strong party in West Bengal for nearly 30 years, but they have lost their public support in a big way. Mamata Banerjee is right now having that upper edge. We, they have around 27 percentage Muslim community who may vote nearly en masse to defeat uh, BJP and Narendra Modi's formation. So that's a huge advantage. Uh, for Mamata Banerjee and issues like Sandesh Kali really has touched their raw nerve there. Even though two days before, uh, you know, some of the women took back the rape complaint 
saying it was instigated uh, by the BJP members. Yes, it's a tricky situation with the governor facing some unfortunate allegation. Nobody knows whether it is true, but the governor also facing un unfortunate allegations. Things are very muddled up there. But yes, BJP either is going to perform like last time or improve their performance. But as we know, it is Mamada Banerjee's I know, home turf. It will be very tough to uh, defeat her per se. She may have the advantage. She may have more number of seats, but BJP definitely will be an emerging player or rising player. And it will become a Trinamool Congress versus BJP in the years ahead. Congress and CPM being sidelined totally. And what do you think about the Mahayuti versus Mahavikas Agadi battle for the 48 seats in Maharashtra? I mean, two, two spaces will be the most interesting thing to watch as a political observer. One would be Delhi, where we have discussed earlier, and one would definitely be Maharashtra. Maharashtra, see, everyone respects Sharad Pawar. Sharad Pawar is such a tall leader, but he has been cut to size, unfortunately, by some of the actions, which many felt people felt humiliated. The Maratha strongman is being humiliated, is what somebody has said. Uddhav Thakareji, as we all know, uh, Bala Sahib Thakare, I, we have immense respect for Bala Sahib Thakare. I have personally met him. I went to Matosri. And many people around India felt that Uthav Thakareji was humiliated by BJP campaign because of so many other things. So there is a Maratha sentiment. Congress will bank on the Maratha Muslim and kind of unity for their vote bank and NCP being um, uh, broken and or divided. Uh, uh, our uh, Shiv Sena being divided will definitely be a question. I think it was Chagan Bujbal who said there is a sympathy and undercurrent uh, for uh, the uh, India formation, not India formation per se, but for Sharad Pawar and Uthal Thakreji. It will be a very close fight. I am absolutely sure Maharashtra is going to be one of the nail-biting finish. BJP may have an upper edge because they are uh, better in resources, better in centralized management. Some cadres are there, even though they don't seem much enthused this time, much energized this time. Definitely Sankh is the basic mechanism of uh, BJP. So they will definitely have a presence and they will have the cadres across North India. And there is also a Hindutva vote bank. But the core question would be who would eat into that Hindutva vote bank, whether mm. it be BJP, whether it be Uthav Sena. And the Maratha World Bank, who would be eating into it? Sharad Pawar. So it's an emotional gamble too. It would be, and there are people like uh, Ujjwal Nigamji are there. So again, the terror angle may come. So it will be a very interesting fight. I think it will be too close to call with almost 20 plus seats for each formation. And Maharashtra will be very exciting to watch. Indeed. With that, I would like to thank you for joining us. Uh, of course, presenting your perspective, your analysis regarding uh, the 2024 battle. That is it for this episode, viewers. We'll be coming back. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel, hit the bell icon.